This is a review for the iLife A9. The A9's airflow was measured at 11 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.12 kPa. In our carpet stress test, the A9 picked up all debris not distributed close to the edges of the test station very well. This robot has a fairly narrow direct cleaning path as its brushable compartment is only five and a half inches wide. But with the help of its side brushes and repeated movement over the same areas, it was able to clean up all of the areas, not including the areas close to the edges of the test station, reasonably well over time. We'll talk more about its edge performance later in the review. In our carpet deep clean test, the A9 picked up only three grams of debris after three passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris. In our hard floor stress test, the A9 once again picked up all debris towards the center of the test station very well, though it once again struggled picking up edge debris, even on its edge cleaning mode. The A9 uses a camera-based navigation system, and so it moves in an organized row-by-row -row pattern as it cleans. The problem is that as it moves from one row to the next, it doesn't get sufficiently close to the edges to clean them properly. Note how it moves towards the edge at a slight angle to make its turn to the next row. Compare this movement to that of the Roborock E4, for example, which takes a very tight turn right at the edge when it moves from one row to the next. The Roborock's movement is much better for edge cleaning. The E4 and most other robot vacuums we tested also move parallel and close to the edge multiple times as part of their regular cleaning cycles. The A9 only moves parallel and close to certain edges and much more infrequently than other robot vacuums. All of this behavior makes the A9 one of the worst edge cleaning robot vacuums we've tested. In our robot vacuum crevice test, the A9 did not perform well on default power or on maximum power. Even after extensive runtime, it still could not pull most of the debris out of the crevice used for this test on either power setting. In our human hair pickup test, the A9 picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. 80 to 90% of the hair it picked up tangled around its side brushes and around its brush roll and had to be cleaned off manually. In our pet hair pickup test, the A9 picked up and collected all of the shorter pet hair used for this test in its dustbin. We tested the A9's cleaning efficiency and coverage in two different environments, an empty room and a cluttered room. In our empty room testing, we see the A9's general row-by-row -row cleaning pattern demonstrated very well. We also see how it gets good, even coverage throughout most of the room. The A9 struggled in our cluttered room testing. In the first trial, shown here, we see how the robot's camera-based navigation system allows it to clean most of the room fairly logically. However, it runs into considerable trouble trying to clean underneath the chair frame. It has no trouble getting underneath the chair frame, but has considerable trouble trying to get out from underneath it. In this trial, it has no trouble cleaning underneath the chair frame, but it fails to clean the whole bottom left side of the room. Clearly, the A9's navigation system does not perform well in cluttered environments. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is not a mapping robot. It does generate a very basic map of the area it's cleaning, which you can look at on the iLife Companion app, but you can't really interact with the map. You can't label rooms on the map or set the robot to clean certain areas or stay out of certain areas of the map. The A9 does come with a virtual wall, what iLife calls an electro wall, which you can physically place in one part of your home to keep the robot out of that area. Additional electro walls can also be purchased separately. In the same chart, also note the A9's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the A9 one of the smaller robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. We like the fact that it comes with a physical remote control and can be controlled wirelessly via NAP. We also like that it comes with an iLife electro wall. It's also one of the quietest robot vacuums we tested, and it has good dustbin size and good battery life. Moving on to what we dislike about the A9, there are several things we could mention, but the two most important are its lackluster edge performance and its poor coverage in cluttered environments. And this takes us right into our general recommendations. The truth is that this robot just does not navigate very well. This hurts its edge performance, and it also hurts its performance in cluttered environments. And it's because of its poor navigation that we cannot recommend the A9.
see the description of this video for the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we do recommend. And thank you for watching.